this is Elena and I am so excited today to bring you a practice for nourishment um, so that you can thrive even more in your life. We have talked a lot about self-care and you know by now that for me self-care is a term that is all about doing. But today I have a practice for you that is all about being. Right? This is a yin yoga practice that you can take any of these shapes and do them just one in your practice, or you can do them all for a longer practice. Yin yoga, for those of you that are new to it, are a practice where we don't use our muscles. We get into the fascia, the connected tissue, which not only do we want to hydrate and keep elastic so that we can move, excuse me, but we also want to let whatever is stored up there emerge because that's where a lot of our emotions live. That's where just a lot of the stuff lives. And so when we stay in these shapes for, for anywhere from 90 seconds to five minutes, we are eliciting that response where our body is talking to us and we stay there anyway because we know that we're okay. Now, I am just going to quickly show you these practices. That way you can make them yours, right? So if you want to stay in these shapes for longer, by all means, stay there. In fact, I'm not gonna stay in any of these shapes for 90 seconds to five minutes. I'm gonna let you decide what feels good. And if you are like, well, wait, I need to have a timer, you can go by feel. Um, you can decide to just spend, right? You can turn on some music and spend a song <laughs> in each shape, or you can just start to go by feel, especially if this practice is new to you. Just notice what's there for you as you practice it. You'll notice any kind of yoga mat. In this practice I especially picked because you can really do it anywhere and all you'll need are, you know, if you have a block, fabulous, but you really don't need a block. You can have a blanket, you could have a pillow or two or three or two blankets, right? That's really all you need and yourself. I mean, I'm not even in yoga clothes. <laughs> I'm certainly in casual clothes where I can move and feel comfortable, but you don't need anything specific for this practice other than yourself. I also love this practice because it can be done at any time of the day. Sometimes I love ending my day with some of these shapes. Sometimes I like starting my day and sometimes some of these shapes feel good in the middle of the day, just for fun, if you have a space where you can carve that out. So know that this is something that you totally can create for yourself based on what feels good in your heart. All right, are you ready to begin? Before we begin a formal shape, I always would encourage you to start your practice either lying down or sitting up, just by connecting to your breath. This, whether it's three breaths or six breaths or longer, just that idea of really tuning into you will help you be able to discern and get to know the body that you brought with you in this moment, right? As opposed to any other moment. So you can let your hands be soft. You can bring them to heart center, whatever it is, close the eyes and just allow yourself to notice the in and the out without any force or effort. To let the hips feel heavy, any points of contact to feel heavy. I like to elongate my exhales because that invites in a release, a softening, a slightly longer exhale than my inhale, especially in this practice. Just begin to notice and get to know whatever is happening inside you in this moment. Notice the rise and the fall. And when you're ready, bring your left hand to your heart and your right hand to rest on top of it. And state an intention for this practice, your practice something that you wish to cultivate, something that you wish to honor. Maybe it's the idea of nourishment. And seal that intention with a big inhale. And an exhale. Maybe that's all we do, that's 
pretty fabulous. So our first sheet is butterfly. I like to take the blanket or the pillow and set it underneath my hips. This just helps elevate the hips, make them a little bit higher. And then you bring the soles of your, the feet together. Now, some of you are like, heels in really close, but I'm gonna invite you to let the hips go out. So you're almost making a triangle here. And we begin by sitting up nice and tall, spine long, allowing the hips to root in. This might be where you stay or you might decide that the body is craving a little bit more. But the idea here is not to force a shape, it's to let the shape find you. So you can begin to walk the hands from the knees to the ankles and just pause. If sensation finds you here, maybe that's where you stay. Maybe the hands want to find the feet. Maybe the spine wants to stay long or maybe it wants to round. You can decide. Sometimes it can be nice, especially if I'm feeling very distracted, to take my hands and put them underneath my ankles. The reason that this is nice is sometimes we like to fiddle with our hands, and this practice is really one about being still as much as possible, to letting ourselves sink in and letting whatever is there for us emerge. So we stay here in this butterfly. The head, the neck can be heavy. And after a while, you check in, allow the thighs to kind of soften. You'll start to notice, right, as you're in the shape, where you're gripping. So when you find a spot, when you notice a spot where you're gripping, send your breath there. And after you've stayed there for as long as you want to stay there, or if you've set a timer to 90 seconds, or did I say 90 minutes before? <laughs> You don't want to stay in any of these shapes for 90 minutes. I mean, you could, but you may not ever speak to me again. Um, 90 seconds to five minutes, whatever that feels like. I like to, especially in this shape, unwind and open up the arms, gaze up, take a big breath in, let it go. From here, we'll find our way down onto the earth and we'll set up for supported bridge. Now, supported bridge. You can have the blanket, a bolster, a pillow, whatever is going to feel good. But the idea is find your way down onto the ground first. Walk your heels in towards your hips. Stay here for a little bit. Just notice what this feels like. And then when you're ready, you can take whatever you're going to support yourself with. Maybe it's a block, maybe it's a pillow, maybe it's a blanket. And you lift up the hips and you place that implement, whatever it is, under underneath the tailbone, that space where you usually have the label on your pants. And then you rest your hands out, palms face up to receive. And you stay here. This is one of my very, very favorite shapes, especially at the end of the day or at any time where I feel really frazzled, being inverted like this, having the heart higher than the brain helps just calm the entire nervous system down. So you close your eyes and you just stay here. If you're looking for a, if your back is craving a little bit of sensation, the right leg can extend down. You'll notice that if there's any pinching, bring that leg back up. Maybe that feels okay, then maybe release the left leg down. Either way, allow yourself to sink into this shape. I could stay in supported bridge pretty much all day long. That is what I could stay in for 90, 90 minutes or more. When you're done, you release the block and then hug the knees in. Maybe you rock side to side. And then it's nice to take a happy baby to steer the soles of the feet to the ceiling. You can grab onto the inside edges of the feet, the ankles, the, sh the shins, or even the outside edges. Whatever feels better to you. You can sway side to side or just be still. You don't have to stay here for long, but it's nice to take five or six rounds of breath to let the hips really release down to the earth. And then when you're done, release the legs down. Send the left leg down and keep the right leg, the right knee in. We'll set up for a reclined twist. And remember, these shapes can all be done independently of one another. 
And this reclined twist is, have I said, this, this is another favorite shape. I have a lot of them. <laughs> but this is a shape I often take um, sometimes after dinner or before bed, for sure, if my stomach is ever feeling a little wonky. So you guide the right knee towards the right edge of the body, and then you guide the right knee across over to the left side. The right arm goes long. Now maybe that right knee finds the earth, or maybe it finds the block or the blanket to support it. Okay. And then you stay, you let gravity here bring you into this twist rather than forcing the twist. This is really so good for the belly and the digestive system. And it's a reminder that you don't need to force anything. The twist will find you in time. When you're done with the side, you bring that leg back. I'd like to hug it in and say thank you to it. And then you switch sides. You bring the left knee in and you guide that left knee across. Then you gaze over to the left fingertips. And if you're wondering, are the sides important? In this shape, not many shapes matter, but in this shape it does because of the intestines, the upper and lower intestines, we want to hug that right knee and then send it over to the left first and then hug the left knee in, okay? Because this will literally help anything that's in there, in gas, <laughs> escape from top to bottom rather than from bottom to top. And I'm sure my yoga anatomy teachers would like me to explain that better, but I think you'll get it. <laughs> um, and don't be surprised if there are natural phenomena that occur in this shape or when you come out of this shape. It's one of the reasons it can feel so nice. <laughs> so you stay here and then come back to center, hug both knees in. You can rock side to side or just be still. And then when you're ready, you can rock up and down your spine a few times until you find your way upright. And then we'll lay all the way down, but on our belly this time. How is that for fun? <laughs> so we'll set up for Sphinx. And in Sphinx, the idea is that we bring our elbows underneath our shoulders and we let our feet splay out. And so you can even shake the legs here and then the palms rest down. I like to lower and lift the chest so that I can allow the sensation, and you have to move slowly enough, you allow the sensation to find you, and when you find that spot, probably in your low back, that says, hello, you stay there. Now, I already noticed that when that happened, my legs tensed up. So I'm gonna shake them out a little bit more and just let them rest. And in this shape, it's nice to take an inhale, allow that inhale to travel down the tail, but all the way to the spine to the tailbone. And then on the exhale, allow the belly to soften. And as the belly softens into the earth, you might notice that the heart automatically lifts on its own. Allow that to happen. This is a beautiful shape for really kind of getting into that heart space and letting all the stuff that we store up into the belly soften and be released. You stay here. This is another favorite shape. Really, it's all of them. I'm sorry. But what, what that means is if you were to take just one of these shapes on their own or one a day, you'd be pretty good. You'd be feeling a lot of nourishment. <laughs> you might be having your body talk to you a little bit if this is new to you, but my hunch is you'll feel pretty good. When you're ready to come out of Sphinx, you can do one of two things. You can go all the way down and just release your hands, release your head and release your hands, or you can spend a few minutes walking the hands out a little bit and lifting yourself up, lifting yourself up in what's known as seal, right? You can keep a micro bend in the elbows, but still allow the belly to soften into the earth as the heart lifts. And then when you're ready, let the hands come down and create a pillow with your hands for your forehead and stay there. When you are all ready to lift yourself up, it can be nice to find a child's pose. So for child's pose, the knees go wide, the big toes touch, the forearm, the hands find the earth, and the forehead finds the earth. You can press the forehead into the ground and move it side to side. 
to release anything that feels sticky. Child's pose is another one of those shapes. Beginning, end of the day, any time that you need to just feel grounded and connected. Though I warn you, it's often a time when you have a dog or a cat that they like to come play on top of you. <laughs> Cooper is being so good, he's asleep. So there you go. After that, find your way to your hips and we'll play with square pose. I would invite you to take that blanket again and set it underneath the hips. And then for square, I like to start with my shins one in front of the other. It doesn't really matter which side you start in, but allow the hips to settle in. If this feels okay, I mean, this is totally where you could stay. If this feels okay, you can bring one shin over the other. So one ankle comes on top of the knee, the other knee comes on top of the other ankle. And you'll notice if this is like mm, not too much or this might be too much, the other option with square is to take it one legged. So the bottom leg is extended and then you create a figure four. So when you're in this, and other modification is to bring a block or a blanket or a pillow underneath that top knee to support it. So from here, you can stay lifted. You'll probably feel sensation in the hips, or you can begin to hinge forward, walk the hands forward. Maybe the forehead drops. Chances are good. If you're like me, the hips are gonna say hello. <laughs> That's when you smile and say hello back. And we stay here chest can be supported by the shins and you stay here this is one of those shapes that sometimes I take when I'm watching TV because <laughs> um, if I'm watching TV I might as well allow my hips to settle in but it's also really nice to just take in silence when you're done you come back up you can windshield right by the legs side to side and then we switch to the other side. Again, start slow with the shins one in front of the other because the side might be different. Maybe then one stacks or that bottom leg extends and you take that figure four and perhaps you fold on this side. I will share with you that my yin mentor, Jafar Alexander, once shared with me that, what's the word? Um, oh, Guys, what's the word? Same on one side as the other. <laughs> is overrated. Whatever that word is that starts with an S that for some reason I'm not thinking of in a minute. <laughs> Symmetry. Symmetry can be overrated. Having it be different on one side than the other is okay, right? So you stay here when you're done. You come back up. Chances are good when you stay in that shape for 90 seconds to five minutes, the hips are gonna creak a little bit. You just let that be. And then the last shape, or almost last shape that I'll show you today is a seated forward fold. Again, keeping the hips maybe slightly elevated. One thing that tends to happen with me is when I find this, my, my muscles go, right? They, they really tense up. So I like to shake them out and maybe even massage them a little bit. And it can be nice to open the chest here too. And then from here, you can stay lifted or you can begin to fold over the legs. If you have a blanket and a pillow, you can set that blanket or pillow in front of you and really support yourself. But wherever you end up, I would invite you to release your hands, let the palms face up in a gesture of just accepting where you are rather than forcing. Because there's very different, there's a very different sensation between palms face up and gripping onto your ankles or your feet for dear life, right? That's force, that's doing. This is being. <laughs> your head, your neck can be heavy. Your spine can round. And we stay here. We let gravity do what it wants to do with you. <laughs> when you're ready, you rise up. Again, maybe the arms reach. Maybe you interlace the hands behind you. And then the very last shape that I will invite you to consider is Shavasana. Shavasana is the release of all doing, the relinquishment of all doing. Now, Shavasana, some of you are thinking, I'm busy, I don't want to take Shavasana, I don't need Shavasana, it's not doing anything. And I will tell you that once upon a time, I used to loathe, yeah, loathe Shavasana because I was like, who has time for that? I have places to be, things to do. 
except <laughs> then I realized what a beautiful gift it was to allow the body to absorb all the practice. It is that moment where you can relinquish everything, the muscles, the breath, the thoughts, and just be, right? Shavasana is, is a gift you give yourself. And in fact, when people come take my classes, I say, if all you need is Shavasana tonight or today, take it. I won't bug you. <laughs> take what you need. <laughs> it is a beautiful practice, even though you are doing nothing. So just a few thoughts for Shavasana. The idea is to take up space. If your low back would like some support, you can take the blanket or a pillow and put it underneath the knees. And then you just lie down. The palms rest face up. You can scan through the body and just invite each body part that has contact with the earth to release. And then you stay there. You stay there for as long as feels good, for as long as your time allows. And if this is not something you're used to doing, I invite you to give it a try. And it might feel hard and let that be okay. But know that this is just one of those practices that lear learning to nourish ourselves is a journey. It is a process. And we're not necessarily always very good at it at first, <laughs> right? but being kind to yourself, noticing what feels hard, what feels challenging as you're in any of these shapes. That is important awareness. Tune into that awareness. Don't just brush it off or try to make it go away because number one, it doesn't work. And number two, it's information. It gives you information and the ability to be more discerning and to really tune in to what's going on with you. I always, after Shavasana, like to just come back to hands at heart center, a little bit of space between the palms, bowing down slightly towards the fingertips and let that space between the palms be filled with gratitude for you, for your practice, for your body, for your breath. And then it can be nice to seal the practice with a big inhale and an exhale. The nourishment, the love, the practice in me honors, respects, and is so grateful for the nourishment, the love, and the practice in you. I'd love to know how this goes for you, what questions you have, how we can make this practice yours. Please, please reach out with questions. Know that I am delighted to support you in any way that I can. Bye for now.